Hi, I'm Phil Gordon. You don't need an advanced understanding of calculus to be a solid poker player. But the more mathematical analysis you can bring to the game, the better off you'll be. In this lesson, I'll introduce you to a few shortcuts that'll help you determine the correct mathematical play for some very specific situations. For me, poker is a game of math. I use mathematics in just about every single decision-making process that I have at the table. Guys like Chris Ferguson, Andy Block, and Gus Hansen are also very mathematical. But you don't have to be an MIT rocket scientist to play great poker. Other players don't think that math is all that important. Guys like Phil Ivey, guys like Eric Lindgren, maybe Jennifer Harmon. They take a very non-mathematical approach to the game but still get great results. No matter how much poker math you like to have in your game, I've got three shortcuts, three very easy mathematical shortcuts that I think will improve your game. The first one I call the rule of four and two. The rule of four and two gives you an approximation of your chances or your opponent's chances of catching a winning card on the turn of the river. The second I'm going to give you is called the ace-x rule. This will give you a mathematical way to figure out how often your ace with the kicker is going to be the best hand or undominated hand at the table. This is mainly used in short stack situations. And finally, I'm going to round out your lesson with something I call the Gordon Pair Principle. This is going to give you an approximation of your chances of having the best pair at the table when you have a hand like pocket eights or pocket sevens or even pocket queens. No matter how much math you like in your poker game, it's essential that you use the principle of pot odds effectively. I've got a very easy way to estimate your chances of winning the pot called the rule of four and two. The rule of four and two is pretty simple, really. It gives you an approximation of your chances of hitting a draw on the turn or the river, and it's almost always accurate to within one or two percent. You use the rule of four after the flop. All you do is you count the number of cards that are left in the deck that you think will give you a winning hand. You multiply that number by four, and you come up with a percentage. For example, if I have nine outs, nine times four is 36. I essentially have about a 36% chance of hitting my draw on the turn or the river. You use the rule of two with one card to come. You count the number of cards that you think will give you a winning hand, you multiply by two, and that gives you a percentage. For instance, if you have five outs with one card to come, five times two is 10, you've got about a 10% chance of hitting that winning card on the river. All right, let's take a look at the rule of four in action. In this case, the blinds are 100-200. I've got 8-7 suited in the big blind. A short stacked opponent makes it 600 and everyone folds. And I go ahead and make the call. Now the flop is ace-7-6. Now, based on my read, I think Gail's got a big ace. I think she's got like ace-king or ace-queen. If that is the case, I only have five cards left in the deck that can come on the turn of the river that will give me the best hand. Any seven or any eight. There are two sevens left in the deck. There are three eights left in the deck. So I've counted my outs. I've got five outs. I take five, I multiply it by four, and I get 20. I've got about a 20% chance of catching a seven or an eight on the turn of the river. And if I do so, I think I'll have the best hand. I check. My opponent bets 1,100. And now I just have to do the right thing. I know I've got about a 20% chance of catching up. But an $1,100 bet into a $1,300 pot will not make this call profitable. I think that if she's got ace-king or ace-queen, or even pocket kings or pocket queens or pocket jacks, that this hand is beat and I should fold. So indeed, I'm going to do the right mathematical thing and throw this hand away. All right, let's take another look at the rule of four and two. In this hand, I've got eight-seven suited on the button in a five-ten game. Everyone folds around. Player makes it 40. I make the call on the button and everyone else folds. The flop's pretty good for me. It's ace, nine, six. I've got an open-ended straight draw. Now at this point, I calculate my chances of making a winning hand on the river. I know that if a 10 or a five comes, I'm gonna make a straight. There are eight cards left in the deck at this point that will give me a winning hand. Four tens and four fives. Eight times four is 32. At this point in the hand, I've got about a 32% chance of making a winning hand by the river. Now my 